Hello, Saints. Welcome to another life-changing episode of the Order of Melchizedek television show. I don't know any program around the world that focuses the body of Christ on the unfolding revelation of the Order of Melchizedek, that eternal, life-changing priesthood of Yeshua Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, listen, today I'm going to begin to talk about living in Mount Zion, part one and part two. So you really want to watch both broadcasts. So I would really encourage you to DVR these two broadcasts. As a matter of fact, DVR everything I do on this show because God is saying things that you won't find anywhere else. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I want to read uh, uh, Psalm 110, verse 1 to 4, and then connect it to Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm just going to begin to talk to you about Raising your awareness or your consciousness of where you are living. Now, this might surprise you. You're not, li that, that, that you're not just living in the country you are in. You're not just living in the city you are in. If you are a child of God, I'm going to show you that the truth of the matter is you are living in Mount Zion. The problem is if you don't have a revelation of what Mount Zion makes available to you, then all the withdrawals that you're going to have to make to do your destiny has to come from what's available within around you. The problem with this world, it is incapable of containing perfection. This is a world incapable of containing perfection. It's incapable of containing fullness. That's why there are shortages everywhere. There is problems everywhere because this is the kind of world we live in. So having the world as your only resource is pretty dangerous because that's not what God intended for you. So in the order of Melchizedek, I want to show you that the priesthood of Melchizedek actually operates from the city of God, the Bible called Zion. So we're going to begin to be, be read this from Psalm 110, verse 1 and 4. Then we're going to move to Hebrews chapter 12. And over two episodes, I believe we're going to have much to cover that will change your life. Praise God. In Psalm 110, my greatest king of Israel is David. I love David. I love his sincerity with God. I love how honest he was in his moments of candor with the Lord. He was, his, his, his walk with God was so authentic. When he felt like God had left him, he would say, where are you? Where have you left me? I mean, that's the kind of connection that David had with God. Godly yearns for us to have the real thing and not try to fake it. Praise God. So David says this, the Lord said to my Lord. Now notice that in the text, both are... Uh, uh, the Lord's David is referencing, referencing in the text, are Lord's to David. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies my, your footstool. The Lord shall send the road of your strength out of Zion. This is important. The Lord is going to send the road of your strength out of Zion. Row in the midst of your enemies. Wow. So already we are beginning to see that there's something about living in Zion that will give us the stature and the power here on earth to rule in the midst of our enemies. Now this is a reference to living on earth because God has no enemies in heaven. There are no enemies of God in heaven. The enemies of God are on earth. They are found in the world of men. You know, because anything that is coming after you, Trying to destroy your life is an enemy of God because God is your father. He loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you on the cross. So the only way the enemy can slap, can, you know, can point a finger at God or try to hurt God is to try to hurt his children. Think about it. If somebody, if a bully knew they cannot fight you, but they slap your child, you are still going to feel it. You didn't get slapped, but your child got slapped. That's how the bully gets to you. So Satan loves to attack mankind because they are we are representatives of God. We were made in the image of God. So he says this in verse 3. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power, in the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning. You have the dew of your youth. The Lord, he has sown and will not relent or change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So David is given a revelation about a priesthood of Melchizedek, a priesthood that Yeshua Jesus, who is on the right hand of God, functions in. Because it's very clear that Psalm 110 is a messianic prophecy. A messianic prophecy is where David begins to speak 
about the Lord in a way that it's very clear there's no way David could be the subject of what's being talked about. You know, it's not David whom the father tells, sit on my right hand. We know that is a direct inference, reference to Yeshua Jesus. When he ascended and took captivity captive, he back to the heavenly realms, he sat down according to Hebrews chapter 8 on the right hand of God. So we know it's not David who's seated on the right hand of God, is Yeshua Jesus. So this Psalm 110 is a complete prophetic proclamation about the priesthood of Jesus and his ascension and his ultimate place of enthronement next to the heavenly father in the glory realm. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. What is interesting is the footstool is where you place your feet. Jesus is the head of the church. The, the implication is if Jesus is the head of the church, then he cannot be the footstool. We are the feet of Jesus. We are the feet of Jesus. So through us, Jesus in his exalted position on the right hand of God is waiting for us through his, through his finished work and our connection to his priesthood to subjugate his enemies and make all of his enemies our footstool. That is a prophetic picture of the triumphant church if there ever was one. Praise God. But what I want to focus on really over the next two episodes is Mount Zion. What is this thing called Zion? Out of Zion, God will send forth the road of your authority. Out of Zion, God will send your strength out of Zion to rule in the midst of your enemies. I don't know about you, but I got some enemies, and I'd like to be able to. I, I would. I don't want to be. I don't want life to surrender me to the will of my enemies. I want to rise over my enemies. A, there are biblical promises where God says He even laid a table for us in front of our enemies. I want that part of the covenant to work for me, where I'm not a victim of my enemies. I'm able to manifest destiny in spite of them. That, that, is, that, is the, that is the idea that is carried by rule in the midst of your enemies. In other words, do what you are called to do in spite of them. In spite of them trying to trip you down, bring you down, rule in the midst of your enemies. Praise the Lord. But connected to this promise is this thing called Zion. What is very interesting, according to theologians, in the etymology of language, yeah, of language, it was discover, in, the, discover, it's discovered that the word Zion did not exist in the syntax of human language. It was literally a revelation of David. It is David who is to use the word Zion. It is out of revelation that David brings the city of God and names the city of David Zion. You know, but the Bible uses that metaphor, Mount Zion, a lot in the Bible. You know, and, 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 and so I want to be able to go deep down with you and understand why, how this affects you today, wherever you are, in Africa, in Asia, in America. If you can only learn how to live out of Zion, draw from the resources that are available to you through your citizenship in Zion, through your residency in Zion, your whole life will change. Your whole life will change. So let's now move to the book of Hebrews because then we're going to really dig down into the mystery of Zion and the connection of the order of Melchizedek to the city of Zion. Praise God. So Hebrews chapter 12, beginning from verse 22 says, But you have come to Mount Zion. Now remember, Paul is writing to born-again believers in the New Testament. These are not believers in the Old Covenant. He's talking to the saints in the New Covenant. So this is applying to everybody. This is our portion. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, my God, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. My God, that speaks of better things than that of Abel. My. These three scriptures are loaded, and it's going to take two episodes 
to really unpack them because what I'm hoping to achieve at the end of this two broadcast is that you will be, you come into a place as a believer where you, are, you can effortlessly live in, live in the realities of Zion today. What is the point of Jesus dying for something that he wants you to enjoy if you are not going to enjoy it because you lack the revelation to make withdrawals out of what's available to you? So the Bible tells us about Mount Zion, that we have come to Mount Zion. We have come. It's like, it, I mean, this scripture rhymes with Ephesians 2 verse 6. He hath made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has made us. He's not going to do it. It's already been done. It is now our duty to operate as though we have already been enthroned with Christ Jesus. You know, that is powerful. Well, this scripture is in the same class of thinking. It says, you have come to Mount Zion. Whether you know it or not, you have come to Mount Zion. That means, therefore, that if you live in Los Angeles, for instance, or you live in Lusaka or Pretoria, South Africa, the uh, resources available to you are not limited to what's available in Pretoria, are not limited to what's available in London. You see, you see when you are part of a city, there are amenities. They are available to the people that live in the city. They are banking. There are banking systems there. There is, uh, there is, there, they might be uh, shopping malls that are available to you. There might be jobs that are available to you within the economy of the city that you can access. You can make a livelihood from what's available in the city. That's the essence. But here's the deal. The Bible wants you to understand that no matter the city on earth you live in, you have come to Mount Zion. You have come to this ancient city of God called Mount Zion. The problem with many believers is this. We forget or we don't know we have come to Mount Zion. So we have limited our resources to what's available in the cities, the broken down cities of men. Listen, I don't want you to go anywhere. I'll be right back because I'm going to continue downloading on this because I really want you to know how to live in the city of Zion. Introducing The Order of Melchizedek is another blockbuster book from Dr. Francis Miles. It contains our packed teaching on God's enduring agenda to station on earth a functional body of kings and priests who can represent the kingdom of God accurately. You will learn how the order of Melchizedek will unleash a fathering spirit in the church and the marketplace for community transformation. You will learn how the order of Melchizedek saved Abraham's life and gave him an everlasting inheritance in the kingdom of God. How Jesus Christ's eternal priesthood affects us today and beyond, and how you can enter into the dimension of real kingdom wealth by understanding the order of Melchizedek. Know how to grow your spiritual influence beyond the four walls of your church. And you will learn how the Order of Melchizedek can help you break free of generation curses once and for all. For more information on this book, go to www.francismiles.com to purchase this book. Go to www.francismiles.com Listen, I really want you to get that product. Get that book. It's going to change your life. You know, it is one of the most comprehensive books ever written on the subject of Melchizedek. So if you're interested to know who Jesus really is, you want to get that product right away. Uh, it's available on Amazon. It's available on my, my website, francismiles.com. It's available on iBooks. Get the order of Melchizedek. I know your life will never be the same again. Now, going back to our teaching on living in Mount Zion, living in Mount Zion, the city of God. This is so powerful, saints, to understand how to live from the city of Zion. Because otherwise you are going to be limited by whatever your city offers. And God helps you if the city council in your city, you know, are corrupt, they are incompetent. You know, that means the city is going to be lacking a lot of resources that you ought to be having because they are mismanaging the city. But can I submit to you, there is a city that, is, that will never be mismanaged, that is full of resources. You need to finish your destiny. The problem is, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. knowledge lack of knowledge means you are not making withdrawals out of the city of Zion. 
So let me read a scripture, then we're going to go back to Hebrews 12. But I want to read Hebrews 11, verse 9 and 10, because you've got to, see, you've got to hear this. This is so powerful. This has to do with Abraham. The Bible says, by faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Watch this. For he waited for the city. What was he waiting for? For the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. The question then becomes, what is that city that Abraham, the patriarch of our faith, was waiting on. Even though he, he found the land of promise, thank God he knew there was something more. He kept seeing the city of God. He waited. He waited. For a city whose foundations and maker is God. What city is that? It is the city of Zion. Mount Zion is a city. And I'm telling you right now as a born again believer. You have access by the Holy Spirit to what's available for you in Mount Zion. The city of the living God. So we're going to go begin to break down what is available to us in Mount Zion. Who is in Mount Zion? Number one. Mount Zion is the, is, the, is the seat where the throne of God is. That's why when in Psalm 110, David says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. And out of Zion you shall rule in the midst of your enemies. So we know that the throne of God is in Mount Zion. Why would you not want to uh, withdraw from a city that houses the throne of God? What other seat is more powerful than the throne of God? If you begin to live in consciousness, where you begin to understand, I'm not just living in America. I'm not just living in the UK. I'm not just living in Zambia. I'm not just living in South Africa. I mean, yes, the pandemic is everywhere in the different nations, but guess what? There's no pandemic. There is no pandemic in the city of Zion. You can access what's available. You can access what's available and bring it down here on earth. In your reality, you can begin to experience the reality of Mount Zion. Why would God say you have come to Mount Zion if he did not want you to experience what is available to you in Zion? So I'm so tired of waiting to die to experience what Christ says I can have now. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of doing that. I want to experience now what Jesus died for me to experience now. Mount Zion was one of those now things God wants you to experience. He doesn't want you to die, get to heaven, and then discover what was available to you on earth in Mount Zion. God says, look at this. We have got checks you never cashed. We've got opportunities you never drew upon, uh, you know, and you went through a difficult time on earth because these resources were never meant for here. They were meant for there. That's why you have come to Mount Zion. You have come. To Mount Zion. Since I'm telling you. Every time you're giving your tithe. You're giving your offerings. You are giving that into Mount Zion. So you have equity in the city. All the offerings you've been given. All the tithes you've been given. What do you think they are there for? They are there so that you are part of the city of God. So that anytime you want to make a withdraw from the city of God. There's a record you have been giving into the city of God. There's a record you are part of the city of God. So why are you trying to make your life difficult? I'm telling you. Much is available. Much is available to us in the city of God. That means I can access the throne of God. I can invoke the throne of God against any principality, against, uh, against the witchcraft that is trying to come against me. I don't care what you're dealing with right now. There's nothing you're dealing with right now which cannot be silenced by the glory that comes from the throne. So that's what's available. Messiah himself, Yeshua Jesus, Messiah himself is seated on the right hand of God in Mount Zion, the city of God. You can access the reality of Jesus. Jesus is available to you on a level you never experienced before if you can begin to live with a consciousness that you're not limited to the city you are in. I know that you see what's around you, but the truth of the matter is you are not limited to the city you are living in. It may be dysfunctional. Power, maybe you are in a city where power, there's always power outages in and out. Can I submit to you 
that the light of God never goes out in Mount Zion. And the Bible says his light was the life of all men. You can access the light of God when you, when you cannot see clearly. When you, know what, when, when you don't know what decision to make. You can always access the light of God. That is available to in Mount Zion, and you can say clearly, and you will know exactly what to do. The Bible says, Thy word is like a lamp unto my feet. It's like a light unto my feet. Your word. These things are available to you. When God began to teach me years ago, I believe this happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that's when God gave me. 2012 is when God began to give me the revelation of living in Zion. So Francis, as a member of the Melchizedek order, the Melchizedek priesthood, do you know the priesthood of Melchizedek places you right in the middle of the city of Zion? Because that priesthood of Zion, because the order of Melchizedek is a priesthood of Zion. It comes out of Zion. That is why David was able to bring down the revelation of Zion. See, Zion, again, was never available in the syntax of human language. This is proven by linguistics. It was not available in the syntax of human language until David was given the revelation of the city of God. And he wanted to have, to have a replica of it. Or here on, and God let him have a replica of it here on earth. And that's why he was able to call the city of David Zion, just to remind him of this place in the heavenly realms that you and I have access to. I'm telling you right now that you can, have, you can access the divine resources that are available to you in Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God is moving. You know, hallelujah. Listen. Right now, as I'm talking about it, it's, it's, it's raining outside. And if you can hear it, just receive it in your life as the rain of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. I tell you, miraculous things happen when we're talking about Mount Zion. I will really believe that God is about to rain blessings into your life in this season. I believe God is about to rain breakthrough in your life as you begin to know how to tap into Mount Zion, that city of the living God. So we know that Mount Zion is the city of the living God. This is the city that Abraham, our father of faith, was looking for. Even, even though he got the promised land, it was not enough. He understood there was a city of God that I've been called to live in. I'm here to tell you, my friend, you can bring down the reality of the city of Zion into your, into your city. You can begin to rule your city by bringing down Zion. If you're a pastor, you're an apostle, this is how you can rule your city. is by bringing down the template of Zion into your city. Begin, by begin to talk to your city, your natural city, from the platform of Zion. Because the city of God, when it's overlaid over any city, will begin to shift the climate in a region. Praise God. Because Mount Zion is the city of the living God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. But I, I can tell you there's no, city, there's, no, no, there's no place I would rather be than in the city of God. Than the city of God. Abraham, thank God, he found that he found the city of God. He found that he found the city of God. Whose foundation, whose builder and maker is the living God. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that in the end of times, the city of God, Mount Zion, is going to come down. Hallelujah. And the Bible I'm going to say the tabernacle of God is now with men. And in that day, because of Mount Zion, will come down, the, the city of God will come down to live with men. The Bible says the sun will not give its light. The moon will not give its light. Why? Because the God, the Father, and the Lamb will be the light of that city. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is no sun, there is no moon in the city of Zion. Why? Because the light of Jesus, the light of the Heavenly Father, is the light of the city of Zion. Praise the living God. I tell you, my friend, I would believe as you and I begin to realize that we're living in the city of Zion now, we can change the houses we live in, the cars we drive, in the cities we live right now here on earth, no matter how much broken, mismanaged, the city you are living in might be. That's not all you have. You have access to Zion, the city of the living God. 
I pray for you right now to begin to experience in your life the realities of living in the city of Zion in Jesus' mighty name. Now listen, I wanted to deviate this show. If you miss it, we always dump it on our YouTube channel, Francis Miles International, so you can always watch our broadcast. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>